how Biden and McCarthy have been meeting to negotiate a deal on the debt ceiling before the June 1st deadline, but remain far apart on key issues such as spending cuts and tax increases. The debt ceiling is the legal limit on how much the federal government can borrow to pay its bills. If Congress does not raise it by June 1st, the government could default on its obligations and trigger a global financial crisis. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have been trying to reach a deal on the debt ceiling for weeks, but they have not made much progress. They have different views on how to address the budget deficit and the role of government. Biden wants to raise taxes on the wealthy and corporations to pay for his ambitious spending plans on infrastructure, social programs and climate change. He says these investments will boost economic growth and create jobs. McCarthy opposes any tax increases and demands spending cuts as part of a debt ceiling deal. He says the government has a spending problem and needs to live within its means. He also accuses Biden of succumbing to the demands of the radical left. The two leaders have met in person and over the phone several times, but they have not found much common ground. They have also clashed publicly over their positions and blamed each other for the impasse. Biden has raised the possibility of using his executive authority to raise the debt ceiling without Congress, citing the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. But he has also questioned whether there is enough time to do so before the deadline. McCarthy has said he will not let the government default, but he has also insisted that Biden must compromise on spending. He has said he will not restart negotiations until Biden returns from his trip to Asia. As the clock ticks toward a possible default, both sides are under pressure to find a solution. But they also face challenges from their own parties, who may not support a deal that goes against their principles. Will Biden and McCarthy be able to bridge their differences and avoid a default? Or will they push the country to the brink of an economic disaster? Stay tuned for more updates on this developing story. The debt ceiling is the legal limit on how much the federal government can borrow to pay its bills. If Congress does not raise or suspend the debt ceiling by October 18, the Treasury Department will run out of money and default on its obligations, which could trigger a global financial crisis. Both sides are trying to exploit the debt ceiling crisis for political gain, with Biden accusing Republicans of holding the economy hostage and McCarthy blaming Democrats for reckless spending and succumbing to the far left. Biden has been urging Republicans to cooperate with Democrats and vote to raise or suspend the debt ceiling, arguing that it is a bipartisan responsibility and a matter of national security. He has warned that a default would hurt millions of Americans, undermine the recovery from the pandemic, and damage the country's reputation and credibility. Biden has also been trying to pressure Republicans by linking the debt ceiling to his $3.5 trillion social spending plan, which he says will create jobs, lower costs, and strengthen the middle class. He has claimed that Republicans are blocking his agenda because they want to protect the wealthy and the corporations from paying their fair share of taxes. McCarthy has been resisting Biden's calls and insisting that Democrats should raise the debt ceiling on their own, using a special budget process called reconciliation that only requires a simple majority in the Senate. He has argued that Republicans have no obligation to help Democrats pass their massive spending bill, which he says will increase inflation, raise taxes, and expand government control. McCarthy has also been trying to portray Democrats as divided and dysfunctional, pointing to the internal disagreements among progressives and moderates over the size and scope of Biden's plan. He has claimed that Democrats are catering to the far left and ignoring the will of the American people, who elected a divided government in 2020.